Okay, we're going to go ahead and discuss factors that influence climate. So climate, as we remember, is the long-term average of weather conditions um, in a specific area. And it's affected by both the temperature and the precipitation of that area. There are these things called microclimates. These are smaller climates um, because they are smaller areas with climate conditions that are a little bit different from those around them. So there's the big climate areas. These are the areas that all have very similar precipitation and temperature. And then these little tiny microclimates that can exist within that larger climate because of different things. So for example, we have here, we have a mountain. And on this side, we get a lot more sunshine than on this side. So on this side, we're going to have a lot more trees and vegetation than we will on the shaded slope. So that would be a microclimate because the shaded slope is different than the climate around it. So um, temperature is, like I said, a very big um, impactor of climate. So the main factors within temperature, the main factors that influence temperature are latitude, altitude, distance from oceans and lakes, and ocean currents. So the latitude, so I know this is a lot to write down. Um, but it's important. So the latitude, we know the Earth is divided into three temperature zones based on latitude. So we have our equator here, and then we have 23 degrees north, and then we have 67 degrees north, and then we have the Arctic Circle, and then the same thing down here. Now uh, there's the tropical zone, which is between 0 and 23 degrees, so all the way between here and here is the tropical zone. And then we have the temperate zones, that's between 23.5 degrees and 67 degrees north, as well as between 23.5 degrees south and 67 degrees south. And then we have the polar zones or the arctic zones, they're the same thing, different word for the same thing. So that's between 67 degrees north and 67 degrees south and the poles. So um, that would be the difference, so latitude affects um, basically the temperature. So obviously the hottest would be in the tropical zone, the temperate zone would be the milder temperatures, and the cold temperatures would be in the polar zones. Alright, so distance from oceans and lakes. So large bodies of water influence temperatures because water heats up, cools down more, uh, heats up and cools down more slowly than land. So in marine climates, these are relatively warm winters and cool summers. Um, and then continental climates occur inland areas and are often characterized by really cold winters and warm and hot summers. And the reason why is because of exactly this. So as the sun beats down on the ocean, the ocean doesn't heat up as fast. You've experienced this anytime you jump into a pool in the summer because the water is nice and cold. The water needs a lot more energy from the sun in order to warm it up. And because of that, the air over the water is going to be cool. So you'll notice cool air. Now because of that, cool air sinks, so it's going to push the other cool air on towards the land. And land, you know this if you've ever walked on a sidewalk in the summer, it gets hot. Okay, solid land gets really hot in the summer. It absorbs a lot of the sun's energy. Well, it's a lot of the sun's radiation. And as it gets hot, it heats the air above it. And so that warm air is going to rise above the land, and then it's going to be pushed out of the way by more air rising. Then as it moves over the ocean, it's going to cool. And as it cools, it's going to sink. And it's going to sink because this water does not accept as much heat. It does not get as much radiation and increase in temperature as much. So you're going to get this nice little cycle going um, if you are on the border of a large body of water and your land. And that's going to cause um, the temperatures to decrease a little bit or affect the temperatures. Um, altitude. We know this because we talked about um, the layers of the atmosphere and we know that as temperature De or excuse me, as altitude increases, temperature decreases. And the higher in altitude that you are, the colder the average air temperature tends to be. So here's a graph that shows that. We have our temperature here and our altitude here. So as our altitude increases, notice that the temperature decreases. Um, the next thing we have is ocean currents. So cool 
um, currents can be cool or warm. And if there are cool ocean currents, they have cool air above them. And if there are warm ocean currents, they have warm air above them. And that impacts the type of air that is above them, and so, thus the type of air that will move into um, the land. So here we have, it shows some of the streams. So we have um, warmer ocean currents um, that pass around the equator and then as they move up into the polar areas they cool down and then they sink back down they're nice and cold and then they get heated up and then they move around so the ocean currents so all the ocean currents right here are also going to bring warm air so you're going to get a lot of warm air off the coast of these and a lot of cooler air off the coast of the cold ocean currents and then precipit or excuse me and then prevailing winds so these are the winds that carry warm moist air or cool air over the land so you guys should remember something like this um, it should look somewhat familiar to you um, we have obviously the um, equator and we have the winds and you remember that when air rises or excuse me when air heats up right here Okay, most of it's over the ocean, so it's going to be warm, moist air, and it's going to rise, and as it rises, it's going to start to cool and condense, and it's going to produce rain. Now, cool air um, sinks and warms up and dries out deserts. So as the cool air sinks, so this air has already dropped all of its water, and so it's going to cool off, and we are going to get deserts up here. Now, up here, we are going to get rising winds that are wet, okay? and that's because they're over um, oceans a lot of the times and then they are going to sink and we're going to get rainfall so you're going to notice that um, above up in the poles all of the air that ends up rising okay, is going to be dry by the time it gets to the poles both here and here and so therefore you're not going to get a lot of uh, rain or precipitation there you might get snow but that's just because that's all the all the air, um, excuse me, all the water in the air is going to freeze because it's so cold. Um, so yeah, you're going to get a lot more deserts around 30 degrees because it's drier air and a lot more rainforests um, towards the equator and a little further up because of the warmer air. All right, um, another factor, or actually now what we're going to talk about is, or I guess. Let's go back here really quick. Now we're talking about precipitation and prevailing winds affect precipitation. We just talked about that. And now precipitation um, is affected by great mountains or mountain ranges. Um, mountain ranges that are in the path of prevailing winds influence where precipitation falls. There are these things called rain shadows. These are areas of low rainfall or uh, um, on a downward or leeway side of the mountain. So what does that mean? So here we have a body of water and all of the air here is going to be really humid, right? Because all this water evaporated into the air. And the wind direction carries it over the land. And as that happens, it runs into a mountain. And because the cloud that has condensed is so heavy with precipitation, it can't make it over that mountain. And so it's going to dump all of its rain on this side. So it's going to be nice and moist. So this is the windward side of the mountain. Now, once it leaves off some of its um, rain, it's going to be able to lighten up, rise up, and it's going to be able to cross over the mountains. But because of that, there's no rain left for this side of the mountain. So this would be the leeward side. So if this was like California, all of the area that is right before the mountains, the Sierra Nevadas, would be nice and green and lush and moist um, because all that um, all those clouds dump all of that rain on this side. But if you're on the other side, this would be an example of Death Valley, the area that is basically a desert because it sits on the opposite side or the leeward side in the rain shadow. Okay. Um, and then seasons. So we all remember seasons. There's sea and land breezes. Now seasons can affect which direction the sea and land breezes move. And so when it does that, um, when these things change direction, you're going to get monsoons. And monsoons are big rains. So here, this would be the winter monsoon. So in winter, we know that the solar radiation is really weak, right? You remember from reasons for the seasons that the solar intensity is not very strong in the winter. And so during the winter, you get this weak solar intensity. And so therefore, the land is kind of cool. And because of that, okay, 
the um, air is going to move out um, away from the land and out towards sea. And because of that, the um, ocean, which is warmer, okay, because it's lower pressure, is going to be warmer and it is going to cause the air to go up, condense, and it's going to rain out over the ocean. Then it's going to cool because of the cold surface temperatures and then it's going to be pushed out of the way and then over the warmer ocean it's going to rise. But during the summer when the solar radiation is not weak, you're going to get this strong solar radiation and the surface area is going to be really hot. And because of that, the air that is right above the hot land surface uh, is going to rise. And as it rises, it's going to create clouds which are going to precipitate and then it is going to cool off and over the cooler oceans, it's going to sink and then it's going to go over the land again. It's going to heat up. Clouds condense with this all this moisture that's here. It's going to rise. It's going to cool off. It's going to cool over the cooler oceans. Um, so you see that those can switch depending on the solar intensity. So again, when there's cold land surfaces, the um, rainstorms tend to happen out over the ocean. And when there is stronger um, solar intensity, the rainstorms will happen over the hot land. Okay, so just a quick way to remember all the things that affect climate. Um, we've got latitude, L, altitude, A, prevailing winds, P, distance from um, oceans and lakes, D, O for ocean currents, G for great mountains, and S for seasons. And a good way to remember that is the saying lap dogs. Okay, lap dogs. So you'll be able to figure out all of the different things that affect climate by remembering the phrase lap dogs. Latitude, altitude, prevailing winds, distance from ocean and lakes, ocean currents, great mountains, and seasons. All right, I hope that made sense.